Hello and welcome to pmplounge.com. Today we are talking about the seven deadly sins you must avoid related to the PMP exam. What are these seven sins? Uh, these are pretty important if you are uh, aiming to get yourself a PMP certification. Avoid these sins at all costs. So, without any further ado, let's get into the seven deadly sins that you must avoid to clear your PMP exam. Sin number one, treating PMB OK guide as the only source of truth. Now, I've said this once, I've said this a hundred times. PMB OK guide is only a guide. It is not an end all to project management. Everything of project management right every topic every concept of project management is not present in the pmb ok guide pmp exam is a test of project management it is not a test of the pmb ok guide do not treat pmb ok as the only source of truth go out read other stuff as well of course pmb ok must be the first book you should read but then your own experience of project management that should also help to a certain extent understand the perspective of pmi how does pmi want you to manage your project understand that pmi perspective and that of course you will find a lot of that in pmbok guide right the pmi perspective to project management you'll definitely find that in the pmbok guide of course pmb ok guide comes from pmi pmp exam is organized by pmi the natural tendency is to think that everything in the pmp exam will be out of the pmb ok guide but that's not true and that is the reason why you should not treat pmb ok guide as the only source of truth there could be certain questions in the exam that you will see and you will realize that you have never heard of any such thing in the PMB OK guide. Although the number of those questions will be pretty limited, but then do not treat PMB OK as the only source of truth. Sin number two is considering or regarding or treating or thinking that your professional experience is above the PMI perspective. A lot of people with a lot of experience in project management tend to think so. They feel that their own professional experience is something they can make use of while answering the PMP questions, which is not true. In the last slide, I spoke to you about how you should Try to find out what the PMI perspective is to manage your projects, right? What the PMI perspective is to project management, how you should manage your project from projects from the PMI perspective, right? So the PMI perspective, repeat with, with me here, the PMI perspective is going to be regarded as over and beyond and above your professional experience. Once you understand what the PMI perspective to project management is, you need to regard it over your own professional experience, right? And the, the, the interesting thing here and why a lot of people commit this sin is because your professional experience of the real world might sometimes actually be different than what PMI perspective is, right? So instead of applying logic right think from the pmi perspective let me give you an example if you are managing a project in a country where bribing to clear your customs is actually a norm right it is uh, it is taken it is uh, it is considered uh, normal for anyone to bribe the customs officers to complete your procurements right any any hardware that is coming in from another country if you want it to get customs cleared you need to bribe the custom official now that is a normal in the country right that is a norm in the country it's 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 nothing out of ordinary right so if there's a question in the exam that tells you the same exact thing and it asks you should you bribe the customs official 
in your real life project management you might do that right but when answering the pmp exam question you cannot compromise on your ethics pmi perspective to project management is not to compromise on your ethics at any in under any situation under any circumstances so the expectation from you to answer that question is that you are not going to bribe the customs official you might do that in your real life right but you should not be answering that in the pmp exam again once you're pmp certified consider how you can you know practice the highest level of ethics possible in your professional life consider how you can get your uh, procurement cleared without bribing right consider the pmi perspective consider how you can make the pmi perspective to project management your second nature so that's the sin number two let's move on sin number three is exam anxiety now you know if you're preparing for the pmp exam if the your entire team knows it that you're preparing for the pmp exam your friends know it your neighbors know it your relatives know it you are definitely going to develop certain amount of anxiety right pm exam is not an easy exam for sure it's a difficult test it's a tricky test and you should the last thing you should be worried about is the exam anxiety now the preparation tests the mock tests they help they will also be helpful for you to practice sitting at the same place for four hours it's a long exam it's a four hour long exam right so you should at least practice sitting in the same place answering questions for four hours before going to the pmi you know going to the pmp exam center and taking up the exam uh, the the actual exam another thing i'd say to avoid exam anxiety is to know and understand the exact exam venue understand how the traffic is in and around during your uh, pmp exam time slot as well so that you're not stuck in traffic while you're uh, going to take up your pmp exam right uh, so that you know if you know the exact location exact venue of the pmp exam you are not stuck you know finding where your building is what floor you need to go to right so uh, avoid these things avoid this will absolutely help you avoiding the exam anxiety sin number four overthinking and over analyzing now i can also call this second guessing a lot of times you read a question and you believe you know the answer to it already and you select it and then you read the question again and you start second guessing you start to overthink and over analyze don't do that you know watch the time you have limited amount of time you have four hours and although they may seem a lot but you also have 200 questions to answer so do not avoid second guessing avoid overthinking avoid over analyzing unless and until you are actually solving a, a numbers based question or people often call it a numerical right and you apply the formula again because you thought you did uh, you you know you did commit a mistake and then you apply the formula again and you realize you actually commit a mistake and then you can obviously you know uh, correct your answer but to overthink and overlie over analyze every single question that is going to be a massive waste of time especially in in the pmp exam where you just have four hours and you need to uh, you know answer 200 questions so don't do that uh some of the uh, some of the questions you know they are pretty big questions they have a lot of red herring um i have made a video on this earlier i'll share it uh, in the description below how to answer questions that are you know wordy they have a lot of words how to answer them one of the techniques is to go directly to the last line so that you have an idea of what uh, the question is about that will help you avoid a lot of distractors that will be there in the question right uh, you can you can always come back to the question later 
right if you feel that you have committed a mistake in answering a certain question you can always come back to it but do not overthink and over analyze and spend loads of times loads of time on a single question and every single question for that matter sin number five is retaking the exam now i'm not talking about you know flunking the exam in the first uh, attempt and then retaking the exam that's not a sin but uh, retaking the exam in the sense where i just mentioned in the previous slide that you can always come back to the question again right you can always uh, come back and review the question that you have answered don't do that for every single question or else you will end up retaking the exam retaking the exam uh, i mean a lot of people find four hours itself as not enough to go over 200 questions retaking the exam will definitely make you it will it's it's a definite ensurer that you are going to run out of time so do not plan to retake the entire exam do not plan to you know look at all the questions that you have already answered once again after you're done with the exam don't review uh, you know all the questions review only the ones that you are pretty sure of that uh, might contain something you might have committed a certain mistake in some of them so remove review only them don't try to answer the questions again that is a sin right uh, don't change your answers um, of course if you can find when, when you're reviewing a question right and you find that you have committed a mistake of course you can change the answer but don't look at each question from the perspective of changing the answer from the perspective of confirming whether you have correct whether you have answered it correctly or not unless and until of course you you are pretty sure that you have committed a mistake and you want to review it again so that's sin number five for you let's move not creating a pmp brain dump is your sin number six now we have made a video earlier on how uh, the time the the uh, the strategy on how you can create a pmp brain dump that has changed because you don't get any extra time now for uh, that you can make use of uh, to create your PMP brain dump and I'll link to that video in the description as well I'll also link to a video in the description where we talked about what should go in in your PMP brain dump But not creating a brain dump is a definite. No, no, it's a sin all the formulas all the common names You cannot memorize every single thing you have to jot it down You have to practice your brain dump and that should be the first thing you do when you enter the exam hall and are given a sheet of rough paper you should uh, you know jot down your brain dump you should have a, a brain dump ready with you which you have memorized right so earlier there used to be a 15 minute training where aspirants use that training to create the pmp brain dump which is not there anymore so uh, you you know you might be using your exam window itself your exam time itself to create the brain dump but that is not a reason to avoid uh, the the importance of brain dump right to to overlook the importance of brain dump it is extremely important not creating a pmp brain dump is a definite sin let's move on to sin number seven the last sin of the seven deadly sins of pmp and that is not making use of the four hours of exam a lot of people think and you know they've heard stories about how somebody from some other department or from some other company or someone's friend went in to write the pmp exam and was done in the two two in when was done in two hours two and a half hours so they tend to not make use of the four hours of exam don't do that don't rush make use of the entire four hours right if you have finished your exam in two and a half hours go over all the questions that you can as many times as you can but make use of your four hours right if you have answered 200 questions and you have made use of let's say three hours and 45 minutes then of course the previous sin applies where you don't you should not be retaking the exam but if you have finished the exam and I, I'm, I'm i'm not sure how people actually finish the exam in two hours in the first place but if you are one of those masterminds then 
by all means go over all 200 questions again you have the time if you walk out of the pmp exam center by finishing your exam in the first two hours you are not going to get any extra marks for completing the exam in a four hour exam in two hours right so make use of those four marks of four hours that you you have uh, completing the exam in two and a half hours is not going to give you extra marks so why 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 not make use of this uh, uh, resource that you have the four hour resource that you have right um, again read the question read the answer answer the question do that for four hours if you're done with the exam and you still have 30 minutes or 15 minutes go back to some of the questions you thought might not be correct read those questions again read all the options read all the answers and then answer the questions so that's about it that was sin number seven and those were all the sins the seven top sins the deadly seven sins of pmp exam hope this video was helpful and hope you are going to avoid these seven sins and i hope you clear your pmp certification exam subscribe to this youtube channel if you haven't done so already check us out on our social media facebook.com slash pmp lounge and twitter.com slash pmp lounge send your queries at pmp lounge at gmail.com and don't forget to check out the website pmp lounge.com your number one free resource for pmp certification and project management industry information thank you